And it became like a collaboration, right? You, you put something in, Midjourney gives you something back, and then you have to analyze that result and decide how you want to direct it further. And that's why I don't like the term prompt engineer. I think it's kind of dumb, uh, especially for like mid-journey type stuff. Really, you're just a creative director. Hey, so we're here in Manhattan. We're on the Upper East Side and we're about to meet with a really amazing AI talent and creator. His name is Nick St. Pierre, and he's been really on the forefront of using AI image generation tools to create new artwork. He's been pushing the boundaries of what's possible, and I think he'll be really interesting to learn from and to get some inspiration from. So let's head in. Hey, what's happening, man? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nick, Nick. Thanks for having us. I've always wanted to open up a restaurant mm. slash bar and I was like, I'm going to go to New York and I'm just going to like jump in. So that's what I did. I was, I was actually, I picked up another tech job like a couple months in because I was like, got to pay the rent, you know, but I, for a year and a half was bartending mm. uh, and did that every night. I was working like doubles wow. essentially Where? every day, a couple different places. That was this place, Jojo, which was like a Jean Georges restaurant. Uh, and then I went and I was at this rooftop spot in Times Square. It was better money and it was like faster pace. Sure. Uh, we were doing like 300, 400 covers a night. So I was able to get like more into the flow. Uh, and then I decided like, why am I killing myself? Because I was working two eight hour shifts, like pretty much every day for a year and a half, uh, just exhausted uh, and started going back into startup stuff and then I, I quit the bar and then I ended up quitting at the startup I was and going independent and then a month later I was like AI is going to take my job I better figure this shit out before it starts coming after me and I spent all of January uh, just going crazy into into AI just like super manic mode I have to figure this stuff out just insane days just testing everything out and just fell in love with mid journey mm. uh, it was like a puzzle I just had to figure it out. Like, how do I control this thing? Mm. Uh, and just started sharing everything on, on Twitter. And a few months later, 100,000 people decided to follow me and find value in it. And now I'm working towards like building that into a little business for myself. Hell yeah. No, I mean, I follow you. It's amazing um, to see what you're doing with it. I mean, I, I started following you to just learn how to get Midjourney to do interesting things. And I'm sure like that's what your 100,000 followers are, are doing because this stuff is such a black box, right? Like you literally type into a text field and it returns like a magical image. And that text field is so open-ended. So like, how did you come to learn how to use it? Just through like trial and error. And there, there are certain things that work, right? It's the way I started approaching it is like, how would I write really good alt text for this image, right? How would I describe it to a person? And like building off of that foundation, thinking about what are the categories of these like terms that I'm using? If I'm mentioning lighting, we can call that a category, right? If I'm mentioning a camera angle, that could be a category or film stock or a medium or a subject, et cetera, et cetera. And each of these things became sort of something to test. And it became like a collaboration, right? You, you put something in, Midjourney gives you something back, and then you have to analyze that result and decide how you want to direct it further. And that's why I don't like the term prompt engineer. I think it's kind of dumb, uh, especially for like Midjourney type stuff. Really, you're just a creative director, right? You are working with the AI, uh, analyzing the results, and then directing it further using the tools and techniques that are available to you uh, and the features that are available to you to tweak the image. And I just sort of built a framework for myself that I called it additive prompting. And I called it that because I was literally adding like a token at a time, building my image and building my prompt uh, as a means of just better collaborating. If I just started with like a hundred different tokens or uh, maybe that's extreme, but if I started even with like 10 or 15 different tokens in there that are talking about all these different things, then I get a result back. I have no idea what's doing what, 
But if I go one at a time and we build it up, I can see that journey and I know exactly what my change did and how I can move it in the direction. So that's this whole idea behind additive prompting. Right. right? You're isolating the variables and then you're using trial and error to figure out what's, how it's responding to those things. Exactly. You're, you're testing and you're building up from a, a simple base that is just like, what is your core idea, right? My core idea could be like uh, a man sitting on the couch, right? And you start there and you see what mid-journey gives back to you. And it's important to start there because you need to understand that your idea that you're after, your core thing, is being interpreted properly. And then from there, I can say, okay, well, I want it to be a close-up shot of this man, and I want him to be in a New York apartment uh, in front of a window mm -hmm. on a cloudy day or an overcast day, you know? Uh, I could put, like, modern lamp or gray upholstery, mm -hmm. and I could start adding these things one by one, seeing how they're getting interpreted until I'm happy with the composition and I feel like it's listening to all the elements. And then at that point, it's like, okay, now I have this prompt. It's giving me pretty much what I want. Then it just becomes curatorial. Now I rerun that prompt a dozen, 50, sometimes a hundred or a couple hundred times. And I look at all the results and I pick my favorites and it becomes curatorial because even with the same prompt, you have all these different seeds that contribute to the randomness. Uh, so I could run that prompt, you know, billions of times and I will get different results. So the curatorial process is also very important. My whole approach to like creativity with technology, and granted this has been like my area of focus way before AI. Like I had a VR company and I went around the world and did a VR film festival. Oh. I've been fascinated by tools that let you author ideas at the speed of thought and mid journey and like text to image based stuff was like the closest that I've ever felt to that authoring at the speed of thought. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's interesting though, cause I've, I've used mid journey a bunch. I'm, I would say super amateur. And for me, like I would really benefit from some UI guidance. Like I was trying to make, I, I'm fascinated by this idea of removing cars from New York city. Like I've, I've lived in New York most of my life and I think that, uh, you know, we shouldn't have cars in most of New York. Um, so I was trying to get Midjourney to like paint a picture of like a post-car New York. Yeah. Which was surprisingly hard to do. Like yeah. getting it to remove cars was actually really difficult. Did you use the no parameter? Did you use negative weighting on cars? I just said no car, no cars, but yeah, it, it but I mean, no you're, you're cars. touching on something important here, which is like, you are a smart guy who's tech savvy yeah. and very tech literate and, have no and idea. still like there's a learning curve here. Right. And that's not your fault at all. Right. Natural, natural uh, thing. If I want to remove cars would be just to write in my prompt, no cars, right. but you in fact do the opposite when you do that because by putting no cars, you're including cars in your prompt. Uh, they have a no parameter, which you do like dash, dash, yeah. no, and then you put cars, and what it'll do is you don't put cars in your initial prompt, it'll try to remove cars from the images. Huh. And the fact that it's difficult to understand these things and that knowledge is not readily available uh, is an issue, because eventually you're working on this thing and you're trying it like a hundred times and you're like, why the fuck am I not getting cars removed, right? Uh, and then you're like, I give up. And then you're like, mid-journey sucks. Like it doesn't listen to me. Uh, and that's, that's a problem, you know? So are you using other editing tools once you get an output from mid-journey? Not often. Huh. Like I, every image that I post on Twitter, I do not bring into Lightroom or hmm. Photoshop or anything. And is that just because you want to push the boundaries of what Midjourney can do? Yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I also share all my prompts, right? So people can copy paste my prompts into Midjourney. Sometimes I put the seed in there. And if I do, they can literally copy paste that prompt with the seed and then run it and get the exact same image that I got. Wow. Um, but even without the seed, like I want what I'm sharing with people, if they decide to copy and use it, I want them to see that they're getting a similar result. If I were to edit all of my photos afterwards and then they put it in there, it's like, oh, it's kind of like fabricated, you know? Mm -hmm. um, that's just the exercise that I'm doing.
with my content, right? It's, it's that ex exploration of how far I could push this thing. Mm. Um, and so by sharing my work, I, and by the way, I don't consider the image my work, like at all. Um, like Mid Journey did that, not me, right? The work I put in is in the prompt and in the creative direction. That is the job that I'm doing. So with me, with everything that I share, it's like what you're seeing is what you will get. Here is the prompt, here is the image. Go try it for yourself and make it your own. Mm. Remix it, you know? Mm. Edit it, uh, change a variable, uh, change the subject. But you now have a structure to work with. But it's your story, it's your unique creative perspective mm. that's going to drive the image into something different. Um, I'm just giving you a starting point, you know? Have you been sharing your prompts from the beginning? Yeah. And that's just your natural, like, it was obvious to you that you should share them. Yeah, I didn't understand why people didn't. Huh. It just, like, felt weird to me. Cause, and you think because the prompt is the thing you're doing? That's my work. That's your work. Yeah, the process that is my work, right? Like, the decisions that I'm making along the way uh, is what is contributing to that image. So if I don't show you my prompt, then you're just seeing like a cool image that's generated by AI, like sweet, but it like, says nothing about what I did. I could say photo of a woman, you know, in front of the Met a hundred different ways. And the, that decision of how I decide to, to phrase it, um, is part of my style, right? And I'll do prompts where I try to like include a narrative in there where it's like, as you're reading it, it's kind of like the script to the image. And is it necessary? No. Like, does adding all of that additional language actually do anything to the image? Sometimes no, sometimes a little bit. Uh, I could just do comma separated terms, cut all that fat uh, and get a pretty similar image, but that's not fun. Like, like the prompt, a piece of it. I actually have, a, I have a, I have a magazine over there. It's the the Economist. Yeah. So I have this. I got this write up in the Economist. Unfortunately, on on, <laughs> on this cover here, the haunting. Uh, but I got this write up right. Um, so they put, they put the image. So this is this is the image I generated. But what I was super stoked on is they also included the prompt. Um, they didn't include the full prompt, but they, uh, they included the prompt. And what's cool about this image is like, I really liked the prompt that I wrote. It, like I had some emojis in there too, but like the way that I structured the prompt, yeah. And I refused to change it. And so because of my refusal to change my prompt, I had to rerun it like 500 times until I got the image that was like the closest fit and then like run a variation or two on those until I was like, okay, this is pretty damn close. Uh, let's roll with it. And the, uh, so the actual, the actual process was like, th the prompt in this case was like, that is my work. I'm happy with it. I love the story that it's driving. I don't want to change it. And so because of my refusal to change it, it was almost like a, like a fight against mid journey <laughs> to try and- Well, cause uh, I mean, one of the things that stuck out to me there, it's like he's describing this scene close up and, and then you have like, watch out behind you in all caps with like three exclamation points. And that, um, I don't know if it does anything for mid journey, but it reads stylistically as a human. Interesting, you're describing a story, right? Like you're yeah. describing the vibe I mean, actually looking at that image and then looking at the prompt, it adds a lot of context. Like it's more totally. interesting with the prompt. Exactly. 35 millimeter 1990s action film still, close up of a bearded man browsing for bottles inside a liquor store, watch out behind you, background action occurs, a white Benz truck crashes through a store window exploding into the background, broken glass flies everywhere, flaming debris sparkles, light the neon night, 90 CGI, gritty realism. I think about prompting like very abstractly. I've started to think about it very abstractly. And when I think about like my art, like as an artist, what am I doing? 
the images are not my work, the prompt is my work, and how do I, how do I elevate that? Mm. How do I elevate that into uh, fine art? Mm. What is that story? What does prompting mean? What is a prompt? Mm. Uh, is it just text input into a chat box? Or is it more than that? Can it be our physical movements? Could it be our you know, you know, deepest fears? Could it be the, the speed at which we uh, you know, select or grab objects? Could it be the, the conversation that we have on a telephone? Like, all these things could be prompts, right? And to humanize the prompt, in a sense, to like bring it outside of just you texting, but to walk into a space and have your presence be what contributes to the, the mm. media generated. Like, that's what I'm trying to explore. And I have a couple things coming up that, uh, that are going to be displays of that. Uh, but that is like core to what I'm trying to get at creatively because like AI generated media is great. The images are fantastic. Uh, the, the technology is getting to a point where it's becoming incredibly useful in a design process or uh, for, for like business or production. But like as an artist, that is all like secondary to me. Like as an artist, I want to understand what it means to work with these machines mm -hmm. and what it means to prompt and think about how we can push that in different directions. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, actually give people that understanding that like the machine's creative output is nothing without your human input. And your authentic story that you have to tell is something that I can't take away from you. Mm. And that story is now capable of generating media that is incredibly vivid and uh, you know beautiful uh, as long as you decide to share it, mm. right? Um, and authenticity will always reign supreme in, in that mm -hmm. case, right? Like nobody can take away uh, your own authentic story. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like th that's prompting to me is much bigger than just text in a, in a chat box. It's like pretty much what it means to be a human interacting with mm -hmm. a machine. And that's much broader. That's cool. I mean, it reads like poetry, which is cool. Are you familiar with Solowit? Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, so his kind of instruction art pieces. Yeah, or like a Yoko Ono's instruction yeah. art pieces. Uh, uh, very much draw inspiration from stuff like that. Also, uh, you know, people like Duchamp and Man Ray. Like, uh, that's more in line with where I see the stuff that I'm doing. Like, I'm trying to be more conceptual with the work that's going to be displayed. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of inspiration to draw from from those guys. So, like, what's your ambition with this stuff? Where do you where do you want to go? I mean, me personally, yeah. I enjoy educating and sharing my my process. Um, I'm going to continue to do that. And then beyond that, I'm signed to an agency, original creative agency, I'm starting to work on projects there too, and that's going to be really exciting because it's an opportunity to actually use this technology in a creative way that is going to be seen by millions of people um, uh, like across the world right and actually have an impact on culture so that's that's sort of like the next big thing for me right now i feel like i'm still in this bubble where i'm teaching people interested in ai about ai but i want to impact culture i want the work to just be beautiful and stand alone Yeah, it sounds like you want to um, push the boundaries of fine art and, and really be a fine artist in that way and sort of elevate this field to that level, um, which is very cool. I want to start a conversation. Like, showing a pretty image that was generated by AI does nothing to stimulate a conversation. It's like a cheap shot. Yeah. yeah. Like, there's a conversation to be made about staring at a canvas because you can look at all of those decisions, right? You can mm -hmm. see the brush strokes, mm -hmm. you can see the mistakes, you can, you can sense the artist's uh, intent mm -hmm. behind it, right? There's so much to analyze. Um, you can't do that in like a AI generated mm -hmm. image, really, if you're just staring at it. Let's think about what actually is the art, what is the creative process by the human in this case.
mm. and it's not the image that's generated. It's the prompt. It's the, it's the prompt and the intent behind it mm. um, that is actually what is the work that's being done mm. by the human in this case. How do you think about, I mean, if you look at the art world, even though there's incredible conceptual artists and like people who really push the boundaries, a lot of it is driven by the market. Yeah. And it's not a coincidence that most works in the highest end galleries are paintings and things that are on walls. They're yeah. very easily saleable. How do you think about that for yourself? Like, if you're making a work that's like a poem, where does the market come into play? Right? I think the reason why people say, oh, the image is the work is because it's easy to sell an image or relatively easy. How do you think about that? There's so many ways that you could you could think about it. Um, like, it could be an interactive installation. Mm. It could still be a canvas on a wall. It could be a sculpture. Mm. It could still be any form of media. Um, so, it, like, it's very open-ended. Uh, it, it's, it's not like uh, just writing, writing a poem down and, like, seeing it in mm. text. Like, there are ways that you can, you can elevate what that is mm. just by context. I mean, it's like what Duchamp did with the urinal. Right? He's like, I sourced this urinal, I found the object, I put it in a gallery, I say it's art, and because of the fact that it's in a gallery, and I said so, it is. The context lifts it. It lifts it, right? And it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. I could change the context of anything by putting it in a weird location, and you will see it, and you're like, that's odd. That's not where that thing is supposed to be. Like, why is that? And now you're curious and you're trying to problem solve and figure that out. And that is what it's all about, right? Driving that emotion, driving that curiosity, making people feel something. Um, that is like everything when it comes to art. So how you decide to do it, how you decide to take a, a prompt and, and elevate it to that level, I think there's a lot of different ways. Um, and that's up to like individual artist style and, and intent behind the piece, you know? So yeah, I mean, like, how do you think about, I feel like a lot of the discussion around this stuff, um, you know, people are worried about jobs and like AI replacing humans. How do you think about that? Um, I think AI will undoubtedly replace a lot of people in certain positions, like it will happen, yeah. but, at the same time, like it's, it's just a tool in the toolbox, yeah. like anything else. It's just like enhanced creativity, right? It just gives you like superpowers. Totally. And that is, that's really compelling. But at the same time, because it gives you those superpowers, sometimes you might not need that other person who would be doing some of that other work because you are now a superhuman and can do it all yourself. So that's why I think like embracing AI as a creative, I think is really important, right? Like I think you do yourself a disservice by ignoring it and at least understand it, at least play with it and get a sense of what's possible, you know? Dude, that was ama amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah, man. I feel like I need to like, I want to go deep into your prompts and like just go into the rabbit Dude, hole. Dude, there's enough journey. of them on Twitter. Yeah. You, can, I'm, I'm, you can go I'm as stuck. deep as you want. So amazing. Well, thanks so much. You next site.